So let's go back to the original graphic and we're gonna start by talking about pillar one, define the content and language standards. So in pillar one, we're gonna define the content standards. What do the ESOL students, what do the students need to know? So a lot of times this might be a process of paring down or eliminating certain standards in favor of what just the big ideas are. So in, in relation to, for example, history, what are the major causes? What are the major results? What are the big picture takeaways? For an ESOL one or two, level one or two student, we wanna focus on what are the most basic content standards that he or she will need to demonstrate mastery. So imagine if you were to take the topic and summarize the topic in five to 10 sentences in order to explain it to your friend or a seven or 10 year old native English speaker. Those would be the major points of the unit. What happened? Why did it happen? Who were some of the important players? And what were the consequences of this event? We wanna take and make sure that our content standards are simple. They're using simple sentences, more universal vocabulary when we're presenting the standards to the student. We also want to identify the language objectives. So what are the language structures that a student would need to know to understand the readings, to understand the student lectures, I mean, the teacher lectures? Similarly, what language structure does the student need in order to demonstrate their knowledge, say in a paragraph or in another format? So some of the language structure examples that an ESOL student might need is an explicit teaching of irregular past tense verbs, similarly like go and went, which might prohibit their comprehension of a reading or a lecture or a video. Transition words, even as simple as because or however, which might cause confusion. And recognizing question words, who, what, when, where, why. If they don't understand the basic question words, they will not be able to answer a question. And then we wanna give explicit instructions on how to restate the question to make sure they understand what the question's asking. And then for giving, uh, to give them simple sentence starters. I agree because, I disagree because, for example, because is similar to and because and according to. We don't want to overcomplicate and give them way too many sentence starters so they would be confusing. We just wanna give them the sentence starters that are very specific to the task that we are asking them to do or very specific to the assessment that we are asking of them. And once again, keep them simple. 